Hello everyone, this is the mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I wanted to quickly discuss Candace Owens and share my thoughts about her getting fired from the Daily Wire and also her political ideologies, some of which I agree with and some of which I do not agree with. Um, so Candace got fired recently and she said she's finally free, quote unquote. And of course, I do believe that she got fired because of her position on the Palestinian conflict and what's happening in Gaza, as far as this genocide that's being committed against the Palestinians by the very people who are in the same tribe as her bosses. So she was fired for that. Candace Owens became really popular a couple years ago for her uh, points of view about the George Floyd situation, the protests, Black Lives Matter, et cetera, et cetera, which I did agree with at the time. I didn't agree with her, but she and I kind of came to the same conclusions about the fact that this protest was not what it appeared to be. I thought that the Black Lives Matter protest and this whole George Floyd situation was a way for the DNC to galvanize Biden supporters into voting for him and to legitimize the theft of the 2020 election. And so I did not understand. It didn't make sense to me that this guy, George Floyd, who was a career criminal, he was a social deviant. He was somebody who wasn't considered a good person while he was alive, why he was touted as being some sort of martyr. Um, to be honest, we should have had that energy for Trayvon Martin, but we weren't going to have that energy for Trayvon Martin or Philando Castile because those murders occurred while Obama was president. And so, yeah, um, the fact that George Floyd, his murder was this big hoopla was more than likely because the Democratic Party wanted to make it appear as if Donald Trump was more racist than Joe Biden. And that's not true. I think they're both equally as racist. Um, I think Biden may be even slightly more racist, to be honest. So as a side note, if you live in New York and you go to Union Square Park, you will see a statue of George Washington riding on a horse. And it's the very tall statue of George Washington. And his hand is outstretched before him, okay? And when you're dealing with, you know, the Freemasons and Masonic occult rituals, when someone has their hand outstretched in front of them, like Hitler did in his own way, um, it means that they are dominating someone. They have control over someone. They're subduing someone, right? Someone is submitting to their will, okay? So there's this huge statue of George Washington riding on a horse in Union Square Park. That symbol is a Masonic symbol of white supremacy, symbol of white superiority and domination. And so I went to Union Square Park and, you know, I saw this statue many times growing up. But after the pandemic, I went to Union Square Park again or during the pandemic, I went there again and I see beneath this huge Masonic George Washington statue on that galloping horse with his hand outstretched before him, I saw three decapitated busts or heads in bronze. I saw the heads of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and Dr. Martin Luther King. There are three heads, three statues, three busts of Black Americans underneath that George Washington statue, okay? So when I first saw the positioning of the, those decapitated heads, I gasped in horror. And I took a picture of that scene um, and sent it to one of my friends a couple of years ago. I got to find it. It's somewhere in my phone. So yeah, for me, as somebody who looks at the symbolic representation of certain things, that depiction of George Washington and those three decapitated heads looked like George Washington had taken the heads off of the native Black American population. He had conquered these lands. And the spirit of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Martin Luther King was being used to perform a ritual of white supremacy in Union Square Park. If you see the way the park is laid out, it looks like an altar, to be quite honest. Okay? So, in my opinion, the George Floyd debacle, that whole fake protest with the Black Lives Matter situation, that was a ritual. But that wasn't why Candace Owens was not in support of Black Lives Matter. Candace Owens is not in support of Black Lives Matter for the same reasons 
that the Israelis don't really care about the Palestinians protesting against their genocide. Candace Owens was hired, whether she knows it or not, she was hired to downplay the atrocities that have been committed against the indigenous Black Americans in this country. That was her job. Whether she cares about it or not, I don't know. So Candace, you know, she's married outside the culture. She's married outside the race. So I think she's fully intentionally divorced herself from Black American culture in general. Um, you know, all she cares about, in my opinion, is how her pseudo-intellect can be weaponized in the way that enriches herself and her family. All she cares about, in my opinion, is championing positions that make her non-threatening to the powers that be. So that is the issue that many Black people have with Candace Owens. Not necessarily the fact that she's intelligent or she's a Republican, per se. I don't think people care, Black people care about that too much. Our ancestors were both Republicans and Democrats. It is what it is. But people who ascribe to a political ideology, to any sort of ideology, whether it's religious or political or academic or cultural, or whatever, um, they kind of fit into certain stereotypes. And so, yeah, I'm not surprised that Candace acts and thinks the way that she does. A lot of Black Republicans think like her. A lot of Black Republicans feel like they have to downplay the atrocities that have been committed against Black Americans to ingratiate themselves to white people or non-Black power. And to be fair, I'm also a person who believes that Black people should be more responsible or should take more accountability for the trajectory of our lives, our communities, and our cultures. We should take more responsibility for that. We should not be waiting for non-Black people to give us permission to fix our communities, to restore ourselves, because they're not going to help us in a way that doesn't benefit them either financially or politically. So Black people will not give reparations unless it benefits the people who destroyed our cultures and took our identities in the first place. It's not going to happen. It doesn't make any sense. It's a fairy tale. Your enemy is not going to give you the resources to build and be independent of them. That's just common sense. So we're going to keep waiting for decades and decades and decades, celebrating really small victories that have no real significance in the real world of power money, and politics. But at this point, our enemies don't really see the benefit in giving Black people reparations. I'm not saying that Black people don't deserve it. I'm saying that we cannot wait for reparations to give us permission to do what we have to do for ourselves. So back to Candace Owens. Candace Owens either doesn't know or she doesn't care that she was a tool being used to downplay the atrocities that Black Americans have experienced at the hands of her bosses. Not her bosses specifically, but the tribe that her boss has belonged to. The same military apparatus that is destroying Gaza right now is the exact same military apparatus that used guns, drugs, immigration, and economic disenfranchisement to destroy the Black American community in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. The same military apparatus that was used to destroy the Black liberation movement, to destroy the Black family is being used right now in Gaza to do the same exact thing. It's literally the same players involved. The deep state, Mossad, the CIA, the FBI, the military industrial complex, government, politicians, the same exact entities are involved. Okay? So they've been using this MO for centuries now. Well, some people will say, well, you can't compare, you know, what's happened to black Americans to what's going on in Gaza because Gaza is being blown up, right? And you're right, Gaza is being incinerated with bombs. But here's one of the reasons why I think the Israeli government is using this method of warfare instead of what they did to Black Americans in the 60s and 70s. Most Palestinians are Muslim, and Muslims are not allowed to indulge in alcohol or drugs or premarital sex, okay? That is not their culture nor their religion. So-called Christians, on the other hand, put everything in their bodies and wonder why their lives are a mess. So the Muslims have a culture and a religion that protects them from the strategies and the machinations of their enemies who use drugs and guns to destroy, to destroy culture, family, community, and spirituality. So their culture protected them from, you know, some of the tactics that were used against the Chinese and that were used against Black Americans in the 1670s. If they could the Israeli government would have poisoned the 
Palestinians with drugs and guns. The same way they did to the Native Americans and the same way they did to Black Americans, who are the same people. So it would have been easier to just dump a bunch of drugs and guns into the Black, to, into Palestinian communities and have them destroy themselves. That's a, a very effective strategy because people would ultimately blame Palestinians for their destruction instead of the enemies who are basically transporting or importing drugs into their communities. So people would basically talk about the Palestinians the same way they do with Black Americans, right? They deserve to be destroyed because they're all high. They don't care about their kids. They're violent. They're animals. But because Gazans are Muslim for the most part, their culture protects them from the machinations of the CIA, of Mossad, of MI5, and other military intelligence agencies that are used to destabilize and destroy economies, cultures, communities, countries, and families. So if you notice, the nation of Islam in America did not really fall victim to the cocaine crack epidemic. You know, some of them got caught up with the heroin situation in the 70s. But for the most part, their religious beliefs protected them from the plots and the schemes of our enemies. The nation of Islam is still relatively strong compared to the rest of the black community um, because they're not allowed to indulge in alcohol or drugs. Unfortunately, black Americans like Russians or Native Americans we have a habit of using self-destructive means to escape from our pain and our trauma. A lot of us have generational trauma or and mental illness from the physical abuse, sexual abuse, and spiritual diseases. We have a lot of compounded traumas. So, you know, instead of us doing the shadow work, which is very difficult to do to heal holistically and healthily, we will indulge in drugs and alcohol and womanizing and other escapist behaviors that are largely self-destructive. Um, and they make the problem worse. When you have a culture that says you can't drink and you can't smoke and thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not you know, fornicate and have children with random people and so on and so forth, when you have a strong culture that is against using those types of vices, period, by and large, you're protected from your enemies who can't use your vices against you. You can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't eat pork, whatever. You're protected from your enemies for the most part. You're protected from drug warfare. There is even certain music that Muslims can't listen to and they don't listen to. There are certain things they don't surround themselves with because they, don't want, to, they want to avoid the temptations of the flesh. Even the way they dress, they have to resist temptation because temptation can be used by their enemies to conquer and destroy their culture, their families, and their communities. And this is one of the reasons why the Muslim community globally is still relatively strong and intact throughout the world. The NOI saved a lot of black men who had addiction problems. Now, I'm not saying that uh, Islam is perfect. It's not. Um, there are deviants and miscreants in every culture. But if the Gazans or the Palestinians were like Black Americans and they didn't have Muslim culture and values, they had a culture of party and bullshit, then the military industrial complex would have just used drugs and guns to destroy Palestine as opposed to what they're doing now. So back to Candace. What Candace doesn't know or what she doesn't care about is the fact that she was being used as a mouthpiece for white supremacists or anti-black ideologies, okay? The reason why you Negroes are suffering is because of your own laziness and your own lack of accountability and your own stupidity and your own weakness. That's why you're suffering. It's not because of what happened to you. The same thing that happened, that's happening in Palestine has happened to black Americans. Settler colonialism has been going on for hundreds of years around the world, okay? Every ADOS, FBA, American, Black American listening to this has a story of how their family has had land stolen from them, from Billy Bob in Texas or Arkansas or California or Mississippi or the government taking our land through theft, coercion, deception, and murder. It's not uncommon. So what happened to Black Americans hundreds of years ago or 100 years ago or 40 years ago, even now to this day? It's happening to Gazans right now. But Candace Owens has compassion for the Gazans and not for Black Americans. Again, I'm not saying that what's happening in Gaza right now with Black Americans is comparative. It's not. We're not being bombed actively by the U.S. government. Um, we were bombed in the 20s and 30s and even up to the 80s at some point. But we're not being bombed right now. And I'm not saying that Black Americans should not take accountability for their lack of discipline lack of self-control, and other self-destructive behaviors. We're the only ones who can fix our communities. 
But let's not downplay or dismiss how we got here in the first damn place, okay? Let's not act like Southern colonialism didn't happen because what's happening in Palestine now has been happening to Black Americans and Indigenous Americans who are the same people for centuries. We were invaded, slaughtered, had our land stolen, poisoned, diseases given to us, raped, gutted, lynched. All this stuff happened to us, all of it, for hundreds of years. And it wasn't televised, okay? And it still was happening to us even after we got our freedom. It's just that after the 1960s, the government found a covert way to destroy the black community by using drugs, guns, alcohol, and music because of telecommunications technology. It was a different time. So different times require different strategies of war for getting things done. After the 60s and the civil rights movement, you know, they had to find a way to destroy the black community to where it looked like it was 100% our fault. Now, nobody forced Black people to use drugs or sell drugs, but unfortunately, Black culture, up until that point, was not designed to protect us from the vices of drugs, sex, alcohol, and promiscuity, because at that, at that point, most of us consider ourselves Christians. And Christianity, according to Bobby Hemet, is the most lax religion of them all. Now, culture is not just about your hairstyles or your clothing or your tattoos or your big booties or laid down edges or African-American vernacular or dances and songs. That is not all that culture encompasses. Culture is also the systems that you put in place to protect the children, to protect the women, to protect the men even, or give men the strength and a sense of purpose and a knowledge of self and the courage to fight for what they believe in or to protect their families, to protect their communities, right? We don't have that. We think that culture is what's fun to do in the moment. It's something that you can buy in the store. Something that's trending on social media. Maintaining a culture and honoring a culture isn't always enjoyable, okay? For example, in most traditional cultures, the members of that cultural family are forbidden to marry outside their race, their culture, or their religion. They're trying to preserve that culture. Your feelings, love, butterflies, sex, penis size, and soulmate fantasies are absolutely irrelevant because the culture establishes the rules, not your personal desires. So Black Americans have largely lost that aspect of our culture where we vet out our partners based on something other than big booties, big penises, drug money, light skin, good hair. You know, a lot of us are merging bloodlines with crazy, violent, and demonic people because we have a culture of death and destruction. Back in the day, unfortunately, Christian rock would have been considered someone you do not have children with. Blue face the same thing. We have people who have no business having children, period, having children with each other, okay? That's how far the culture has fallen. So culture isn't just about the things you enjoy doing. It's about how you're protecting the sanctity of that culture, how you're protecting the future, the children, and future generations. And we don't have that mentality or that mindset for the most part. We care about what makes us feel good right now. So to that point, Candace Owens is correct about some things, but she's not the first person to say that Black people need to get it together, nor will she be the last. Like, you know, Larry Elder was saying this, Thomas Sowell was saying this, we have Black leaders in the Nation of Islam who were saying the same thing, we got to get it together. So she's not saying anything revolutionary. My issue with her is the fact that she has no problem getting on our enemy's platform and talking crap about Black people. And the same people who hired Candace Owens to talk about Black people would never hire Norman Finkelstein to talk about what Israel's doing to Gaza. The same way that, God, that Candace Owens is being rewarded for honesty about Black Americans, how Black Americans seem to be responsible for their own degeneracy and destruction. Why isn't Candace Owens' honesty about Israel being rewarded the same way her honesty about Black Americans is being rewarded? Ben Shapiro is not going to give Norman Finkelstein a platform to spew rhetoric and research about Gaza. He's been talking about this topic for 40 years. Norman Finkelstein has a PhD from Princeton, and his dissertation was about Zionism. But instead of Norman Finkelstein being rewarded for his honesty, he is punished, blackballed, and denied tenure while he was teaching. Mark Lamont Hill was fired from CNN for being honest about what's happening in Palestine. The moral of the story is. You're only rewarded for honesty and intellect when you talk crap about black people. 
You're only rewarded for your intellect where you can be used as a tool to downplay what our enemies have done to us. That is my issue with Candace Owens. There are plenty of black people on both sides, Democratic side, Republican side, black liberation side, Muslim side, whatever. Plenty of black people who have spoken out about the issues of the black community, how we need to get it together, how we need to clean up. That is true. But I would never go on a platform like the Daily Wire, where you can only be honest if it serves your enemy's agenda. I would never go on their platform and talk crap about black people because they would not allow me to use the same platform to tell the truth about who they are. But like Judas, you'll be rewarded handsomely for crucifying black Americans. Even black people who haven't fallen victim to the drugs and the alcohol and the promiscuous lifestyles, we can't even get together and have healthy relationships because of the psychological warfare from the music and having outsiders come into our communities and sell drugs, start gangs, start street wars, sell children. Now we can't trust each other because the people who look like us but had allegiances to our enemies came in and helped to destroy the community through the music, movies, religion, ideologies, etc. Our music was used as a weapon by our enemies to alter our frequencies. A lot of our mental illness comes from the frequency of music that we're listening to. Now we have black women and men both leaving the United States to find love in other countries. Like a lot of people seem to be missing the plot here, okay? Black Americans don't like dating each other, not because of big backs or dustiness. It's because the culture is ugly. When you have an ugly, degenerate culture, you look ugly by default because your culture is your representative to the outside world. Culture represents the highest levels of femininity and masculinity. So black people aren't trying to escape each other by dating other people from different races, right? Or different cultures. They're desperate for a culture that doesn't revolve around darkness, hatred, fear, violence, distrust, cowardice, and a lack of discipline. And I discuss this some more in my upcoming book about astrology, which is coming out in May. But anyway, now I discuss black issues on my channel a lot because a lot of black men like to gaslight and fake innocence to, um, as a weapon to vilify black women and not take accountability for their own behavior. That's happening on both sides. Even if you haven't fallen victim to the drug epidemic and you don't do drugs or alcohol, you will still have a difficult time finding a proper mate because the culture has been destroyed. Our mentality, our perspectives, the way we think about each other, the way we speak to each other, our frequencies have been shifted with the music. Music is all about frequency. You spend 30, 40 years calling black women dogs, hoes, other forms of animals, and the same for black men. Brainwashed into being wild, bed bug cowards who are violent, right? What kind of community can you have with that type of frequency? In ancient cultures, music was used to heal. But the occultists, the wizards, and the magicians in the music industry used our music and turned it into a weapon. So our enemies use every tool at their disposal. Music, drugs, alcohol, culture, education, every single thing that at their disposal to destroy the black community. And Candace Owens does not see that. She doesn't care. All she sees is the fallout of what was done to us. She sees us destroying ourselves. She sees the spiritual diseases that we have now, the mental illness. She doesn't see how we got there. And she doesn't really care. You know, because according to her, if I made it, then you can make it too. Now, again, I'm not saying she's 100% wrong about Black people needing to embrace some conservative or traditional ideals. My problem with her is the fact that she does not have a problem being someone else's tool. Or she doesn't care. As long as she's enriched by it, she doesn't care. And why doesn't she care? Because she doesn't consider herself black. I'm not one of them. I'm the other kind of black. So I can talk shit about these people because I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about y'all, right? Candace Owens, in my opinion, is not trying to help the black community by criticizing it. She's criticizing the black community to separate herself from it. She wants to be considered the exceptional, magical Negro that's not like those Black people. She's not critiquing the Black community with love and compassion. She's doing it from a place of contempt, just like her bosses wanted her to do. It's a textbook case of, if I downplay your experiences and denigrate you and dismiss you and disrespect you, I'm better than you. I'm not you. Her entire goal in life is to not be associated with Black people. She's very ignorant of Black culture. And she uses white culture to bleach herself. This is even before she got married to this white dude. So, yeah, 
I think her whole goal in life is to not be considered one of us. She wants to be considered one of the good black people, one of the good Negroes. And that is why they hired her at the Daily Wire in the first place. It wasn't because she was smarter than anybody else. The Daily Wire would never hire Umar Johnson as a commentator, ever, okay? They wouldn't hire Cynthia G either. They wouldn't hire Norman Finkelstein either. They would not because these people are honest, but their honesty does not align with the anti-Black agenda. So for someone who claims to be politically astute, Candace Owens does not know about the politics of media. She's a willing participant in downplaying, denigrating, dismissing, and disrespecting the people of the Black community without context. She's not part of our community. So I don't really care about her career. I don't really care about her. I don't watch her at all. I don't have any smoke for her per se, but I never really pay attention to her. I don't get triggered by her. She's like a talking head with no real teeth. She doesn't have any power. She's a useful tool. And white supremacy breaks their tools when they're done with them, period. So why was she in the breakfast club? She has nothing in common with black people. Let her go on Joe Rogan's show or Nick Fuente's show. Ironically, Nick Fuente's and Ben Shapiro look similar. I don't know if you guys know that anyway. Like, why is Candace Owens slithering over to the black community after getting fired from the Daily Wire? I don't really care about what her jigsaw face has to say about anything. She's a contrarian, and her only political stance is to basically uh, downplay the black plight. So for Candace Owens to go on these clearly racist platforms and talk smack about black Americans is a problem that I have with her. Because like I said, as soon as she had a stance about Palestinians, that was against the agenda of her bosses. As soon as she spoke up against that situation, even though she was right, she was just telling the truth because she was so smart and she's so different and she's so honest, she got canned. Everything she says is gospel as long as it's against black people. As soon as she criticized Israel for what they were doing in, in Palestine, it was time to get rid of her because her job was never to be honest. Her job was to be a black mouthpiece for white supremacy. I am better than you, Negroes, because I can judge you and critique you from a position of contempt. She's not really interested in helping the Black community. That's not her objective or goal, because she would have more compassion, insight, and understanding about why the Black community is struggling, the same way she has compassion and understanding for the Gazans. So yeah, Candace Owens got fired because she was talking about Palestine in a way that Ben Shapiro did not want her to. They did not have a problem with her talking smack about Black Americans. But as soon as it was time for her honesty to be turned towards them, they got rid of her. So what's the problem, Ben Shapiro? Do you want her to be honest or not? Is she still intelligent or not? Is she still a good black person or not? What happened? Honesty is honesty. It's not subjective. People like Ben Shapiro and other anti-black haters only like honesty when it makes black people look bad. And that is the problem. It's the hypocrisy. And that's why people don't really like Candace Owens like that because, you know, I know you're smart, you're articulate, but you're using that as a weapon against your community or not even your community, against people who look like you because Candace Owens has divorced herself in a black community. Fine. That's why you were hired, Candace. Not because you're an exceptional black person. It's because you're a useful idiot in a Trojan horse. So like these rappers, like these prostitutes, like these people on reality TV who present the most ratchet portrayal of black Americans possible and get paid for it, Candace Owens should be considered a sellout. Okay, you did your job, Candace. Now it's time for you to go because, again, our enemies will never allow a black woman to disrespect them on their platform. Simple as that. Black people can disrespect each other all day. So how do we know that Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire and, you know, platforms like that are an enemy to black people? Because, again, Ben Shapiro would not allow Candace Owens to be honest about Israel the same way she can be honest about Black Americans. Now she's a weapon. If she can't treat you the way that she treats us, then you have an agenda. Why is she allowed to denigrate or downplay or, in your words, be honest about Black Americans, but she can't be honest about what's going on in Palestine? You want a transparency? You want accountability, right? So the Israelis can't be held accountable for what's happening in Palestine? What happened to that? It is because Ben Shapiro wanted to use her honesty and her intellect to downplay what the secret intelligence agencies that are controlled by Israel and Israeli agents in the U.S. government, they want her to downplay what the U.S. military apparatus and, and the secret intelligence agencies 
have been doing against the Black community for decades, for centuries. And that same apparatus, that same system, is being used to destroy Gaza and the Palestinians. So Ben Shapiro, what happened to journalistic integrity and honesty? Why can't Candace be honest about what she's seeing in Palestine? I thought she was intelligent. I thought she wasn't being racist. Yeah, like I thought. So I'm going to leave it there. Later on this week, I'm going to discuss what's happening with the squatter's right situation in New York and around the country. This has nothing to do with you guys. Okay, we're peons. We're plebeians. We're slaves. Okay? Trust me. Nothing ever happens because the peons and plebeians want it to. The corporations and the government have a vested interest in getting rid of squatter's rights. We say, yo, we don't want our money to be used for legal wars. The government says, I can't help you. We say, we don't want our money to be used for corporate bailouts. The government says, I can't help you. As soon as squatter's rights becomes an issue, it's not because of you people listening. It's because a lot of these corporations are purchasing millions of properties that they cannot manage or maintain without a property manager they don't want to pay for because people cannot afford to live in these places. So they're empty, right? So squatter's rights is being used, is going to be removed to protect the corporations who have purchased millions of homes that people cannot afford to live in. That's what's happening. But I'm going to get into that later on this week. All right, guys, look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.